If there's one thing you take away from listening or watching today's podcast, it's in times of fear, sometimes the question to ask yourself is, what's the worst thing that could happen to me in this situation? But sometimes the other way to think about it is, what am I potentially going to miss out on if I don't do this thing? Welcome to another episode of Everyday Badassery. I'm your host, Christine Lozada, and if you're wondering, is Christine currently sitting in the bathroom right now? As a matter of fact, yes. Yes, I am filming this in the bathroom in case you are watching this. I, uh, I actually have really bad food poisoning right now, and I, that's part of the reason why I'm filming today's podcast episode. It's because the story I want to share with you today all started with food poisoning, and I want to be in the bathroom right now because I might need to, you know... I might need to, to, to throw up a little bit and pa I'll pause the video. Don't worry. I'll pause it before I go take care of business. But, uh, I've been very sick for the last 30 hours <laughs> while traveling, uh, and just made it back to Meatball's house. So right now I'm traveling in South Florida. I'm on a three and a half week road trip with my parents included. It's been a phenomenal time. But this story is one that I think is really important. But if you're new here, again, welcome. Make sure you check the show notes. I have a free journal. I would love for you to put what you're listening to in action and journal along with me. And make sure you just check that out in the description below. All right, let's dive in. All right, so this story actually starts in 2011. In 2011, I was making two really huge changes in my life. One was I was quitting my life, my job, my everything in San Francisco, and I was moving to New York City. But the second thing I was doing was I was going to travel the world in between that. And I was gonna travel the world for an indefinite period of time. And I made this decision very, very quickly. I will record another podcast episode about that. So check the show notes below to check that one out. But when I made this decision, it was kind of with like a three-ish week turnaround time. In other words, the time in which I'm quitting my job, moving out or giving away everything I own in my apartment to travel in the world. And so I was thinking, where in the world could I possibly go where I can just show up and it kind of made sense for me to go to the Philippines. I have family that lives there. My godfather was living there at the time. My parents were born in the Philippines, in case you didn't know that. So my parents are immigrants. I'm first generation. And so I remember going to the Philippines and just showing up with a book, one of the travel books that told you about what's going on in the Philippines and what there is to do. So I was just planning on reading this book and kind of settling in and then figuring out my plan to travel through the Philippines and then Southeast Asia. That was the general plan. And I was just gonna do this until I was over it. And then I was gonna move to New York. Actually, let me kick this off with a really embarrassing story. This is really embarrassing. If you've ever felt seasick in your life, then you know exactly what I mean. Like imagine your worst bout of seasickness, but imagine having that feeling as a result of taking too many malaria pills. And what I mean by that is there have been tons of trips I've done in my life um, in which I've had to take malaria pills uh, because I was hiking through the jungle or adventuring through the jungle. But every time I've taken them, it's always been the same kind and the same dose in which you take one pill a day and there you go. That's how it works. And this was the first time that this was not the same kind of malaria pill and I, because I was going abroad, removed everything from the original containers and just put them in plastic bags. So I was taking malaria medicine one time a day when you were supposed to take it one time a week. So I overdosed on malaria pills and it basically makes you feel like you're seasick and or you have had 20 shots of tequila and then you went on a trampoline and then you did spinnies for a really long time. Anyway, that's what it felt like. So. As I settled into the Philippines, that was the kickoff to my amazing trip. And eventually, when I stopped feeling sick from my malaria pills, I went snorkeling. I went to a part of the Philippines, uh, Batangas actually. And in this area, there's not that many tourists there. If you're like, uh, yeah, I've heard of a lot of places in the Philippines, but I, I've never heard of Batangas. That's because you shouldn't have heard of Batangas. And also because the word Batangas also sounds like something totally inappropriate. <laughs> 
But I was, I was in this area and the snorkeling there was amazing because there's no tourists and not that many people. When you jump into the water, the fish are very curious about you and they all come over and there's like swarms of them in a way where you kind of need to push them out of your way so that you can see all of the fish uh, and your surroundings in general. And so I was snorkeling here and it made me realize that, and in case you didn't know this and in case you didn't watch the other episode, one of my biggest fears in life was the ocean, not is the ocean, was the ocean. And I was afraid of the ocean for the majority of my life. At this point in time, I was still afraid of the ocean. This was 2011. And I was really afraid to be in the water with all of these fish who were so beautiful, but there were so many and they were just all around. And I realized I needed to overcome this fear because I'm in one of the most beautiful places in the world to not only be in the ocean, but to scuba dive. And I was like, it's time. It's time to get over this fear. I'm just going to plan a trip somewhere in Southeast Asia to get my scuba license, uh, my scuba certification. And so I decided I was going to go to Koh Tao, Thailand. And so on my way to Koh Tao, Thailand, I stopped obviously a lot of other places. I was in Cambodia. I did a bike ride from Cambodia to Thailand. That was amazing. And eventually made my way to Koh Samui and beautiful, beautiful island. And while I was there, I got the worst food poisoning I've ever gotten, ever. I am notorious. I am notorious for getting food poisoning everywhere I travel to. I don't know if I have a weak stomach or or what, but I just, if there's someone who's gonna get bug bitten and if there's someone who's gonna get food poisoning, that someone is me. It's just kind of guaranteed. And so I got food poisoning while I was there. And it just so happened that where I was at in Koh Samui, I was at a five-star resort that was something like a hundred dollars a night. When I say five-star resort, I mean the kind that has a, the biggest pool you've ever seen and islands on the pool set up with mas massage therapists who massage you all day. So I basically rotated between swimming to the swim up bar, putting an ice pack on my head, drinking orange juice or whatever fresh juice they had, swimming back to the massage table, getting a getting a short massage and then getting golf carted back to my room where I would like sip tea and water all day. It was like the best place in the world to be <laughs> to have food poisoning. And I s extended my stay there, but my class was coming up. I needed to be in Koh Tao to get my diving license. And I was like, am I really going to get my diving license while I have food poisoning? And I'm afraid of the ocean at this point in my life. And the answer was yes, absolutely. Because let's start with the first question. What's the worst thing that could happen? The worst thing that could happen in this situation is, and, and you can kind of jump ahead, right? Because I didn't really know what getting your scuba certification involved at this point. You might assume like, oh, I can't, I can't go now because you're going to get straight into the water. No, this is what I talk about in my other episode about becoming closer to your fears. And so I educated myself around what exactly was I in for with this scuba certification. And what I learned was you don't get in the water right away. Not only did I need to settle into Koh Tao for one day, but the first two or three days, again, this was 2011, it's different now. The first few days, you just need to sit in the classroom and listen to videos which also is like not the best way to spend your vacation. So if you're ever considering getting your scuba cert, do it online, then go to your destination. But again, this was 2011. That wasn't exactly the option at that time. And so I basically had two-ish days, three-ish days to buy myself of being sick before I needed to get in the water. And it was a fantastic time sitting around in a non-air conditioned hot room, feeling sick all day, watching videos and reading scuba books and having great access to a bathroom that I could barf my brains out in every couple hours. So that was that. Now fast forward, the next part of the certification, you don't even go into the ocean yet. So my biggest fear, the ocean, I'm not even going there for like several days. You're in the pool, you're in the pool and you have to do things like 
treading water exercises and just putting your mask on and off and putting on your gear, setting up your gear. They're not even letting you go into the ocean yet. And so not only do I have this classroom time to get better, but I have this pool time. And by now I'm kind of starting to feel better, you know? And now let's ask myself the question, what's the worst thing that could happen? The worst thing that could happen is that I am 10 feet underwater in the pool in a wetsuit and I suddenly either need to throw up or go poo. Like, <laughs> that's pretty embarrassing, but it's true. And that's the worst thing that could happen. So now let's focus on the other side of things, which is what am I potentially missing out on if I do not do this? If I continue to be scared of the ocean for the rest of my life, if I decide, no, 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 it's too hard, I'm sick, it's too far, it takes way, it does take way too much time, it, it can be very costly to get your scuba certification. Basically just a million excuses. I could have given myself a million excuses. There will always be one more really great excuse all the time. I'm very creative. You are very creative if you're listening to this. We will come up with good excuses to not do shit in life. And you know what? You want to know what I'd miss out on? Oh my God. I would miss out on a lifetime of being able to explore not just the world by land, not just the world by the sky with my drones, but now I would potentially miss out on exploring the whole freaking world from the ocean in the ocean. And it, I'm sure you're aware of this because you've seen a globe before. There's a lot of freaking ocean out there. And so it was this opening of the door to explore a brand new, entirely new and different world that I could potentially miss out on. Let me tell you about my first scuba dive. I had the ugliest, the ugliest cry of my entire life. You know what I mean? Like the kind of cry where you're just, like, it's so ugly, like you're kind of gagging and like you just look awful and, and it's not even like, oh, you're so cute when you cry. It's like, wow, you should, you should come out on Halloween and do this. You would scare every single parent and child, to, to be honest. And so I had one of the most amazing, if you can have an amazing, ugly cry of my life on the first scuba dive that I finally did. So again, if you're not aware of what it means to get a certification, you have time in the classroom, you have time in the pool, and then you eventually get into the ocean for very, very easy dives with your dive master. And you're basically doing like super short dives, mainly around technique and things like that, but you get to dive for a little bit. And on my very first dive, I was rounding the corner. I have goosebumps right now. I was rounding the corner of this amazing, amazing coral reef. And it was every single color you could possibly imagine. It was, it, I had never seen coral that looked like this before. It was stunning. And as I rounded the corner and came up around the side, there were thousands of tiny fish everywhere. And the sun was coming in just right. And the whole thing was like a scene out of Little Mermaid and Sebastian the Crab came out and started singing the Under the Sea song. Like it was magical. I started ugly crying in this moment because it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in my life up until this point. I still have goosebumps telling this story. I also cannot believe that I have not thrown up yet and I haven't paused this podcast. So let's keep it going, keep it going full speed. That is what I could have missed out on. That opportunity to see the ocean in that way. And you know what? It's only gotten better. It's only gotten better being able to see the world underwater and all the places I've been to. I now have over 100 scuba dives under my belt and I can't even count how many countries, I guess I should look at my dive log, but I love scuba diving. And so bringing it back to what I shared in the beginning, sometimes the question is to ask yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen? And if something worse than pooing in your wetsuit while underwater, well, yeah, that's kind of awful. But on the other side of things, what are you potentially missing out on? 
So I want you to take that to heart and think about that, even, even in small moments in your life. I mean, this was a really huge moment in my life, but actually just now is a perfect example. I'm on this road trip with my parents. I'm feeling really unwell. I slept 11 hours the other day. And when I got up yesterday, my parents were, they were just gonna, we were just gonna have an easy day at the house. And I can kind of tell when my mom's like antsy and stuff, you know, she kind of wants to get out. And I was like, you know, I could just stay in and work with my laptop on my lap. I got a lot of work to do. Or I could say, hey, let's take a break and let's just go to the tea shop together for a little bit and have, have a couple, you know, have a couple cups of tea. And we did. It was really, really nice. It seems really silly. Like there's nothing to fear in that moment. Well, I guess my fear would be barfing my brains out at the tea shop. That was a very valid concern of mine. Um, but the thing I could have potentially missed out on was just a really fun opportunity to hang out with my mom. We had a really nice time at the tea shop. So bring it into your small every day because when you make those small decisions, it helps you in the times you gotta make the big ones because it, it, it doesn't come without practice. So many people tell me, ah, oh, you're such a badass. You know what? If I practice, if I stopped practicing being a badass tomorrow, the next day, gone, gone, not a badass anymore. You gotta practice that shit every day. My nails are so scary right now if you're watching this video, by the way, but you know, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Anyway. I hope you got some value out of this podcast. If you did, make sure you leave a review or a comment below. It really does help to distribute this to others around the world. And make sure you download that free Badassery Journal. I'd love for you to take what you listen to in action. This podcast is made with love for all y'all. Go forth, be badass, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.